When it comes to hip hop superstar Drake, the views from the six are always going to trump the California countryside. One of the biggest celebrities on the planet has decided to sell his last piece of property in the United States and return to Canada potentially for good. Although it hasn't been confirmed yet, all signs point to Drake decamping from America after he recently listed his sole remaining property in the country, an $88 million Beverly Hills estate. Drake originally purchased this epic 24000 260 square foot California home in the spring of 2022 for $75 million from English pop star Robbie Williams. A Tuscan style mansion, this property is situated on a 19.7 acre plot of land tucked into the hills of Benedict Canyon. It's ideal for anyone looking to maintain their privacy, located at the end of a cul de sac behind large gates. The surrounding countryside offers lush landscaping, including an orchard, olive trees, ancient oaks, and manicured lawns. There's also stunning city, ocean, and mountain views visible from nearly everywhere. Designed by KAA Associates, this mansion boasts a low-key and sleek contemporary design. Boosted by rare marbles, light wood floors, arched ceilings, and large windows basically everywhere you look. Approaching the home, the first thing you'll encounter is the circular motor court with water fountains and a columned entryway that provides an elegant welcome. Once you're inside, there's a double height for you with a sweeping grand staircase. A few further steps in is the home's living room, complete with not one, but two fireplaces, as well as floor to ceiling curved windows that allow for plenty of natural lights. Thanks to its large gourmet kitchen with stainless steel appliances, marble countertops, two work islands, and a separate breakfast room, Drake likely threw more than his fair share of parties while living here, even if it was only for a short time. Whenever Drake wanted to get a bit cozier, he could head on over to his office with built-in cabinets to unwind with a stiff drink or a smooth cigar. And did I mention that this spot even has a family room that doubles as a professional screening room? However, it's Drake's bedroom that must have been his favorite spot of all. Not only does it boast a massive private terrace overlooking the backyard, but the ensuite bathroom features an entire living room, walk-in closet, dressing room, vanity, and a marble soaking tub. Of course, since this is a celebrity estate, three extra ensuite bedrooms have been provided for staff as well. There's also a hidden tennis court alongside an 11 car garage and further amenities like an elevator, wine cellar, gym, and a games room all decked out in wood with a paddleboard table that looks like the ultimate guy's room. So why is Drake leaving a zip code this great? No one seems to know for sure, but it might have something to do with the recent string of break-ins he experienced. A 23-year-old male was arrested for trespassing and claiming Drake was his dad. Then a few months later, another guy broke in and made off with a few of Drake's belongings before police came looking. Now here we are about a year later and all signs point to Drake leaving America behind. By now, everyone's heard of the giant palatial estate that Drake built for himself from the ground up in Toronto. Dubbed the embassy, this mansion situated in Bridal Path has become one of the most searched for homes on the internet. Over the course of 2021 alone, it was Googled more than 1 million times coming in just behind Elon Musk's home address. Drake bought the two acre plot back in 2016 for $6.7 million and immediately unveiled plans to build a palace like mansion that cost him a grand total of $100 million to complete. Measuring in at 50,000 square feet, Drake's home base qualifies as the definition of extravagant. Instead of drywall and upholstered furniture, Drake teamed up with Canadian architectural and interior designer Ferris Rafali to construct the home out of limestone, bronze, exotic woods, and other rare materials. When asked what he was hoping to accomplish with the design of his mansion, Drake told Architectural Digest, because I was building it in my hometown, I wanted the structure to stand firm for a hundred years. I wanted it to have a monumental scale and feel. It will be one of the things I leave behind, so it had to be timeless and strong. Ferris describes the home's interiors as modern art deco combined with overwhelming high-end luxury that comes across thanks to the size of the rooms as well as the materials and details used. The scale of the rooms sets the tone for everything else starting with the cavernous entry hall. Thanks to its solid limestone as well as inserts of marble beneath a faceted ceiling of antique mirror framed in bronze. 
Then there's the epic great room with ceilings 44 feet high. At one end of the room is a concert grand piano centered within a portal comprised of floor to ceiling panels of ebony. There's also a mammoth version of the iconic Metropolitan Chandelier that decorated the Metropolitan Opera House in New York back in 1963. With more than 20,000 pieces of hand cut Swarovski crystal, this is the second largest light sculpture in the world. The Art Deco becomes even more obvious over in Drake's lavish canary yellow lounge. Up top, this space boasts a ceiling of concentric backlit hexagonal panels wrapped in faux suede. There's also a massive glass sunburst chandelier hanging from the center. The furnishings have all been custom designed by Ferris in materials that range from dyed ostrich skin and mohair to macassar and bronze. Of course, no home would be complete without a kitchen, and this one is as big as you probably think, with an opulent marble island and rows of navy blue chairs for Drake's company to put to use. Drake's favorite spot of all is his 3,200 square foot primary suite, which boasts an additional 1,100 square feet of covered terraces. This is where he goes to decompress every night in a bed weighing roughly one ton, which costs more than most people's homes. As for the headboard, it's accented with antique mirror and channel tufted leather. It also boasts a whiskey and champagne bar on the reverse side, just in case he needs a little help to drift off. Off. Then the nightstands boasts mother of pearl inlays paired with bedding featuring an Alexander McQueen hummingbird tapestry. And I haven't forgotten about the bathroom. Its centerpiece is a 4,000 pound tub of facet black marble carved from a single block. When Drake finishes cleaning himself off, he can head on over to his dramatic two-story closet detailed with amethyst hardware, rock crystal, and seating upholstered in diamonds. And for those of you who aren't convinced that this home has been customized enough, Drake has also created an awards room that tells the story of his life from childhood through Degrassi the Next Generation and onto his current reign as one of hip hop's most popular artists. Rounding out the home are more amenities you'd no doubt expect, like sports jerseys displayed in museum-like hallways, an indoor swimming pool covered in black granite, and an NBA regulation-sized basketball court where you can always find Drake shooting hoops. This being Drake's home, he also has a killer recording studio that he recently decided to open to the public. That's right, if you got enough cash to cover the $250,000 rate per hour, you can use all the same equipment Drake does. Just don't expect the price tag to include a feature. Now that he's on his way back home for good, Drake will be spending more time at the embassy than ever before. How long will it take before he starts looking for a new home somewhere else? We'll just have to wait and see. For now, that'll bring this latest house tour to a close. Thanks so much for watching, and before you head out, consider answering the following question. Why do you think Drake is departing the United States? Give me your best guess in the comments down below. Otherwise, like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications to make sure you never miss an episode. I'm Karen. If you'd like to check out another tour, then stay tuned because coming up is a look inside the homes of Nate Diaz. I'll see you all next time. Bye. Most people can't wait to leave their hometown behind, but then again, most people aren't MMA fighter Nate Diaz. If there's one way to summarize the lasting effect his hometown of Stockton, California had on him, it would be the life lesson it taught him. Namely, always be prepared to commit to a fight. Nate's older brother Nick refers to growing up in Stockton as a curse, but Nate's is grateful that it helped him develop his kill or be killed attitude, and he represents the city of his birth with more pride than most. Not only did he popularize a humiliating maneuver to inflict upon his opponents known as the Stockton Slap, he's also ensured that the city's area code 209 is now as infamous as he himself is. UFC commentator John Anik even has had those very numbers tattooed on his arm after losing a poorly made bet against Diaz in one of his fights. Historically speaking, the city of Stockton has dealt with a very high crime rate. More than just that, it's also one of the largest US cities to ever declare bankruptcy. With all of that going on as backdrop, Diaz grew up in a small one-story house in Lodi, which is just a little bit north of Stockton. He lived there with his mother, older brother, and sister, but his father wasn't around much during his childhood. When asked, Nate hates to refer to where he grew up as a rough place because he feels it's too cliche that a cage fighter would come from a violent spot. But he can't deny the effect that Stockton's brutality had on his life. He once told ESPN, It's not necessarily
necessarily we were sitting in the middle of violence, we were just very aware of everything. If someone was getting into it, there was a fight, you would see fights all the time. When Nate was around 13, his older brother began learning how to defend himself, spending most of his time training out of the city's animal house gym, while Nate worked as a cook at the restaurant next door. Eventually, Nate joined his brother in training. More than just that, he became an integral part of it. In fact, whenever Nick would have friends come over to their house to challenge him to a fight, he would tell them to try and tap Nate out first. Most of the time, these older dudes couldn't even come close to choking the then 15-year-old Nate out. Oh, shit. Oh, 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 shit. Oh, shit. This is awesome. oh, shit. Nate eventually followed in his brother's footsteps and by the time he would successfully won the Ultimate Fighter 5 competition, he thought that he finally had it made and would be able to buy luxury homes and super fast cars, but it didn't quite work out that way. The prize for winning the competition was a six figure contract. The problem was Nate didn't realize he wasn't being paid that money in a big lump sum. Instead, it was to be spread out across multiple fights. Not realizing this, Nate walked into to the wrong automobile dealership looking for a top of the line car and wound up walking out with the only thing he could actually afford a small Honda Civic. Following that purchase, he only had a couple thousand dollars to his name, which meant he wasn't going to be able to buy a house for his mom like he planned at first. I went home and I went to buy a, a, a I had a plan to buy my mom a house and buy a Cadillac. But once Nate Diaz became the first person in the UFC to defeat Conor McGregor in 2016, his prospects picked up. He not only began making a ton of money, he's since made sure to take care of his family too. Believe it or not, but Nate Diaz has never moved away from Stockton, California. In fact, he still lives there to this day. It might not be recognized as the safest place to live, but Diaz wouldn't want to call anywhere else home. Property records suggest that Nate bought his estate back in 2011, paying at the time the reasonable amount of $430,000. Originally built in 1995, the exterior of this three bedroom, two and a half bath residence gives us a very 90s vibe. As for the inside and it's over 3,200 square feet of space, well, that's a little bit harder to see because Nate has been careful to not reveal much. More or less, that just leaves us with what we can see from the outside. And it's pretty evident that the community Nate lives in is both charming and peaceful, which is probably why he never felt the need to leave. Out back, the home is distinguished by its ample 1.49 acres of land as well as a lavish pool and an extra large patio that's perfect for entertaining alongside some al fresco dining. And don't even worry about privacy because thanks to the wrought iron fence that surrounds the property as well as some strategically planted trees, no one will be peering in from the outside, especially not around the backyard. While not much has been revealed about the interior of Nate's home, what I was able to uncover was something almost as interesting. Details in the part of his estate that he uses more than any other, his trap house. <laughs> Sitting directly across from Nate Diaz's main property is a small two bedroom guest house where Nate and his teammates regularly gather to chat, smoke up, and watch fights from YouTube on the big screen. Nate patterned this piece of property after his childhood in Lodi, complete with a heavy bag hanging from a tree in the front, just like the one he and Nick used to punch when they were kids. Nate's childhood home is less than a five minute drive from where he lives today. More than just that, his mother and sister live only a block away from their former family home and his father lives close by too. At this point in his career, Nate has made millions of dollars and he's used a lot of it to secure homes for his family members as well as himself without staying too far away from his roots. There's even a nice apartment building known as the University Lofts in downtown Stockton where Nate will regularly put up his teammates and coaches when they arrive from out of town. If they're not already staying at the trap house, that is. For instance, Luciano Ramos, a bantamweight fighter from Argentina, showed up at Nate's gym three years ago. A few months later, Nate's team was partying when someone tried to pick a fight with Diaz. So Ramos stepped in and knocked the guy out with one punch. After that, Diaz let Ramos stay at the trap house free of charge and he's lived there ever since. The living room of this trap house is more or less a glorified man cave, complete with a desktop computer, playing clips of Mike Tyson highlights, framed pieces of art, as well as colorful illustrations that show Albert Einstein, Jeff Bezos, as well as logos of companies like Netflix, NASA, Facebook, and Instagram. There's also a ton of 420 
2020 friendly stuff, including a bonk, backwoods, rolling papers, and lighters. Completing this eclectic collection is a custom pillow featuring a bloody Diaz choking out one of his UFC opponents. Diaz chose his Einstein poster because this image of one of the world's smartest men is symbolic of how he used martial arts to lift himself up out of poverty and become an elite athlete. He believes that like Einstein, he saw something others didn't, namely, his own market value. There's no denying that Nate Diaz has been able to completely transform his life. And it's even crazier to think he's done so without having left his hometown. So whether Nate emerges victorious from his upcoming fight with Jake Paul or not, don't expect him to start looking for a new place to live anytime soon. That's because Nate Diaz has known where he's belonged from the moment he was born. All right, everyone, that's gonna bring this house tour to a close. Thank you so much for watching and before you head out, consider answering the following question. What's the one thing about your hometown that would have made you want to stay? Let me know what made the place you grew up special to you in the comments below. Otherwise, like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications to make sure you never miss an episode. My name is Kara. Follow me on Instagram to chat, and I'll see you all in another video. Bye!